Muhammad told his followers about a paradise, a heaven, that would make Hugh Hefner envious. Hugh, the Playboy Mansion cannot touch the paradise that supposedly awaits Muslims. And this is how Muhammad really won converts. If you join me in this life and you survive battle, you're going to take home female captives. You're going to take home the treasure of your enemies. If you die in battle, you're going to a paradise where an eternity of deflowering young virgins Precisely. awaits you. Yep. Sam, tell us about the Islamic <clears throat> paradise. Because yep. you, you people who are watching, tell me if, the, if you think this is a message from God, that this is what God has in store for people who believe in him. Let me just read what the Quran says, how it describes these maidens of pleasure, known as huris, in paradise. <clears throat> what awaits the men if they are God-fearing <clears throat> and they're allowed to enter paradise? Let's see what the Quran says awaits them. Chapter 55, verses 54 to 58, uh, 58 of the Quran. 55, verses 54, 58. I'm using the Hilali Khan translation because it provides a transliteration of a key Arabic term and in parentheses what it actually means. Reclining upon the couches lined with silk brocade <clears throat> and the fruits of the two gardens will be near at hand. These are the delights of paradise. Then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both, meaning jinns and men, and by the way, it's not just men, it's also genies they will be there, deny. Which of the blessings will you deny, you genies and men? Wherein inside will be those maidens restraining, restraining their glances upon their husbands. They're going to look... They're only going to look upon their husbands. Now note, this means that people are going to still get married in paradise. Whom no man or jinn, and now this is the Arabic word that they provide, yet mithunna, yet mithunna. Now what does that mean, yet mithunna? You don't need to guess. I'm simply reading their translation of the term. No man or jinn has opened their hymens with sexual intercourse before them. Implication, these, these women are virgins. But then their men, the men and genies who, uh, who will marry them will then deflower them, break their hymens. And according to some traditions, they'll return virginal again. So for all eternity, the men and the genies will be busy deflowering virgins who will then go back to virginal so that they can be deflowered over and over and over again for all eternity. Now that's just one description. Let me read another one real quickly. Chapter 78, verses 31 to 36 even tells us the kind of breasts these means of pleasures will have, the kind of breast they will have. <clears throat> 78, 31, and 36. Surely for the God-fearing awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards, and maidens with swelling breasts, like of age. Now in case you don't understand the kind of breasts these women will have, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, one of the greatest Muslim commentators, explains the meaning of this passage, the Arabic terms used in Surah 78, 30, 33. Notice what he says. And vineyards and kawa'ib atrab, kawa'ib atrab, meaning wide-eyed maidens with fully developed breasts. So they're fully developed. Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, and others have said kawa'ib. This means round breasts. They meant by this that the breast of these girls will be fully rounded and not sagging. So these women won't be having sagging, <laughs> sagging breasts. Right? Mm -hmm. So men are going to have women with swelling breasts that they're going to deflower for all eternity. Now, deflowering someone may be quite painful, right? But don't worry about it. Tafsir al Jalalain, the two Jalals, have it figured out. Here's their exposition of chapter 56, verse 36. 56, 36. And made them virgins, immaculate. Every time their spouses enter them, they find them virgins, nor is there any pain of defloration. So they won't experience pain, so they can enjoy it for all eternity. And I can give you more, but I think I've made my point. Um, yeah, you, you have, you have. But uh, just, just give people the basic, that's what you find in the Quran. Give people the basic idea of, uh, of what things are like in, uh, in the Islamic paradise. Is that, is that what you're going to be doing for, for all eternity? And in paradise, you're going to have young boys serving mm -hmm. you. And then that has led to some Muslims. Again, I'm not saying this is the orthodox position or even the majority position. At least one Muslim uh, inferred from that that these young boys will also be for sexual pleasure. In other words, <clears throat> homosexuality is forbidden on earth, but it will be permitted in paradise. Now again, this is not the majority position. It is the view of one Muslim scholar who inferred that because after all, why are you going to have young boys serving you? For what reason? Youths of perpetual freshness, Yusuf Ali translates it, right? So that's one. Another thing they'll have is rivers of wine. Rivers of wine, rivers of honey, rivers of milk, you know, meats and fruits for all eternity, 
these men are going to be reclining on couches, and they're going to be having boys serving them, feeding them, women to deflower. And some traditions say that each man will have up to 70,000 of these huris. Yeah, because so they, we, we, hear the, we hear the number 70 or 72. That's yeah. the minimum, right? That's yeah. the minimum. Yeah. That's yeah. the minimum you get. It doesn't get. say only 70, 72. Yeah. Yes. That's the minimum you get. Any Muslim will get that. If you're a really, really great Muslim, you can get far greater rewards. Much. The Quran doesn't even limit it. It doesn't say 70. Yep. It says you're going to have many. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why I say some traditions will say up to 70,000, mm -hmm. and some will try to say that's weak. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, nowhere in the Hadith is it limited to only 70. Mm -hmm. There are Hadiths that say 70, but it doesn't say only mm -hmm. 70. Mm -hmm. And the Quran nowhere, nowhere limits it to even 70. 